until now, we've only tested a simple React component that renders some HTML to the DOM. What we haven't looked at is how we might test a React component that renders other React components. We're going to do that in this episode by testing the counter list component. The counter list component is a component that, you might have guessed it, renders loads of counters. So by default, we render two of them, and I can interact with these. I can click the add button to give us more counters to play with. For the purposes of the screencast, you don't have to worry too much about the implementation of counter list. What it does is it has a piece of state for the number of counters we're showing, which starts by default as two. And then it creates a range, just an array from zero up to that number using this create range utility function, which I've created. This just uses the array.from function to create an array based on the number that we give it. In the render function, we have a button to add a counter and then we map over each of the items in the counters array, calling this render counter function. Render counter takes in the index or the number, so the first time it renders the counter will be zero, the second counter will have an index of one, and it just returns a list item with a counter component inside it. I have a counter list test file created and I'm running just on the right hand side of the screen, so we're ready to begin. Note that at the moment I'm running the test and we're getting this error message. This is because Jest is running this test file but finding that there isn't a single test in it, so it's erroring at us. This is good because if you accidentally rename a file or you accidentally forget to add tests or you put them in the wrong place or you delete some by accident and you end up with an empty test file, Jest will tell you about it, so it's quite useful behaviour. We'll also use this as a good example to talk about the difference between shallow and mount. I mentioned way back in episode one, we talk more about shallow rendering, what it actually means versus full on mounting rendering. First, I want to compare the difference of shallow rendering and mount rendering in terms of the HTML that it produces for the given component. So I'm going to write just a meaningless test just for the purposes of this demonstration. And I'm going to create two wrappers. I'm going to say shallow wrapper is going to equal the result of shallowly rendering the counter list. And I'm going to say mount wrapper is going to be the result of mounting the counter list. Both shallow and mount here are functions that Enzyme exposes for us. Enzyme provides a method called debug, which gives you an output of what Enzyme is working with. And I've logged that both for the shallow wrapper and for the mount one. By doing that, we can see very clearly the difference between shallow rendering and the mount API. So I'm going to scroll up and first we'll find the const.log for the shallow version. And this is what it looks like. The key thing to note here is that the shallow rendering only goes one level deep. So it doesn't walk down your entire DOM tree, or sorry, your entire tree of React components. This means that the shallow HTML that we're working with here is a button for adding a counter, and then a list, list items with counters inside them. Notice though that Enzyme only knows that we're rendering a counter here. It doesn't know the actual HTML contents of that counter. It could get at it and it could figure them out if it wanted to, but in shallow rendering, we only go one level deep. So the shallow rendering knows that we're rendering a counter, but it's not caring about the specific contents of it. Now, if we compare that to the mount HTML, you'll see that each list item has a counter, but inside we can actually look at the output of the counter and we can look at the rendering of the actual counter component. So mounting actually renders the entire tree of React components. And although you can't tell from this output, it also actually renders them into the DOM and Enzyme takes care of clearing up that DOM between each test so there's never any overlap, but mounting is actually rendering the components into the DOM, whereas shallow rendering isn't. Shallow rendering is also only ever going one level deep. This means as much as anything, you should prefer shallow tests because they're generally much quicker to run. There's much less overhead and much less complexity. We don't need the mount API for this test, so we're gonna go ahead and just use the shallow API that we have available to us. So let's actually write our first test. What I want to say is that the counter list should render two counters by default. So I'm gonna keep my shallow wrapper around, but I'm gonna rename it to just wrapper. And what I'm gonna say here is we'll say the counters should be wrapper.find counter. So we've used wrapper.find before and given it an HTML selector like a paragraph or a button. You can also give it the names of React components such as counter. And we can now say that we expect counters.length to equal two. And you can see that that test is passing. So if you ever got a component that is rendering a bunch of child components and you only care about how many there are, for example, this is a really nice way to test that. What's really nice about this is nothing in this test cares about the actual details of the counter component. We're only checking that there are two of them on the page as that's a crucial bit of functionality of the counter list component. This also means your tests are less brittle. Let's say in, instead of looking for the counter component, 
I went looking for buttons with a class of increment, which we know each counter component has. By writing the test in this way, we also avoid knowing any of the details of the counter component. That's good because this doesn't matter for this test. This test only cares that we have a counter list that renders two counters. It doesn't and it shouldn't care about the actual specifics of rendering the counter. So let's now finish off the counter list test by writing one that checks when we click the add button, we get a new counter. I'm going to copy the test we have and we'll say it can add more counters when we click the button. So here I'm going to say the button is wrapper.findButton. We've only got one button, so I'm, I'm quite happy writing this assertion for now. We'll say button.simulate, click, and then we'll expect that there will be three rather than two. And with that, we've now written really good tests for the counter list component that check the crucial bits of information about it, that it renders the right number of counters and we can add more, but it never dives into the counter component to look at any specifics. Keeping the counter list tests unaware of the contents of the counter component is really important because it means that our tests won't break as often as we're making more changes across our application. This might not feel like a big deal in my dummy little app here where we have two components and two test files, but in a much bigger app where things are changing across a bigger team, this would be a problem a lot. So by keeping your tests more resilient to changes in other components, you'll be much happier as a developer and you'll be able to rely on your test suite much more.